Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Each of you is absolutely unique. If you could measure a human, you would find that each one was different. You may have the same things in the same place biologically, but the filters that you carry into this meeting, this life, are profound. We've spoken of this before, but again we say the bubble that you come in with shields you from everything. It shields you from the negative. It shields you from the positive. You carry in with you a preset of the way you think things work. And if you're presented, therefore, by something else, the judgment is from your preset. Not from an allowance of what might be perhaps different, acceptable, but by your preset. And the biggest preset of all, of most humanity, is how they judge what's going to happen next. The future, as we have said before, is almost always determined only by what they have seen and know through history. In other words, nothing new is really seen. And that's why there's so much shock when you see something new. Dear ones, this particular channel is being described as the great escape. And we start by giving information that was already in the seminar, but the listeners are not aware. We speak of a planet that literally has gone through such darkness such trouble, such horror, disappointment. And it's been over and over. And it's been more than you know. Dear ones, I'll say it again. Humans don't currently live long enough to remember any of it. You would have to go to your grandfathers and great-grandfathers. If you would bring them back now, as we've said before, they would point out the things that you have they didn't, or the promises and the freedoms that they didn't, or the joy of things that you could do now with each other that they didn't because of that which was war. And the ones who were in control but you don't live long enough to know. And because you don't live long enough, you repeat that which is not necessarily what you need to repeat. And then there's another war. And so the humanity, the consciousness thereof, of the past becomes the consciousness of the future in your mind. This all changed in 2012. It's all centered around that which is astronomical, which the ancients of this planet foretold of. This precession of the equinoxes, the 26,000 year wobble, you've been through two of them as humanity that has 23 chromosomes. What did I just say? That humanity, which has 23 chromosomes, is not anything like any other life form here. The ones directly under you on the evolutionary scale have 24, yet 23. The 24th, we have told you before, lurks in a multidimensional way through all of them. And that, my friends, is the Pleiadian layer. 26,000 years times two, over 50. That's how long you have worked the puzzle 
And some of you have been here through it all. This is esoteric information. For the doubters in the room, it isn't information at all. It's simply laughable facts. But I speak to the ones who resonate, who know that they've been here before. And the darkness that you have seen and the troubles that you have had could fill libraries. Every one of you has been each gender. That means all of you who have children. All of you who have, you have had children. All of you have lost children. All of you have been in the battlefield. All of you have killed another human being. And it's all there, simply there, in your Akash. What keeps this from repeating again? In that which is the science of time that goes in a circle, it comes around, it goes around, and here you come again. And that's the discussion of the day, isn't it? That in the 80s it started to shift. And in that time in the Cold War where it was a certainty that you would not survive another war, it all started to unravel. The unraveling was the prophecy of doom. The unraveling was even some spiritual prophecy of this and that starting to happen or come or be. And the year 2000 came and went. And the year 2012, that which was the balance of the precession of the equinoxes, the start and the finish of the wobble, was celebrated the way nobody expected. Dear ones, you were not expected to be here. And that expectation is what I want to talk about. That expectation creates a consciousness of the old prophecy. And if you ask a human being, what's next? They would then tell you, well, eventually, war. And that's what we want to talk about as well. There are those who postulate that humanity is in layers of dimensionality. And that the old energy earth that was going to go through war and horror and nuclear exchange is still there. And that what you did was to shift dimensions and that they are layers of reality. In other words, it's still happening the way it was going to be here in another dimension. Is that accurate? Dear Cryon, is that accurate? I can't give you a yes or a no because you don't know what you're asking. In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Let's pretend for a moment that it's true. That in another dimension very close to yours, the earth terminates itself gradually with nuclear war and horror and all the things that you expected. Let's say that it lays right next to this, this layer that you have, this, this beautiful dimensionality that you have that didn't go there, that has no war, that's building a future that nobody's seen before, unexpected wild cards, where you climb out of an old consciousness and start to develop and evolve into something higher. And they exist together. Let's pretend for a moment that that's what it is. And then you'd ask, well, can we feel the other one? And the answer is, most of you do. The escape we talk about is multi-layered. The biggest escape, the greatest escape, is that which is your dimension, that which is your earth, did not go where it was predicted. You escaped the horror of nuclear exchange, and instead you started on a path that the ancients predicted was there. 
The potential was there. This is not the new age, except it's the expected age. And if you look at what the indigenous taught, whether it was the Mayans, the Toltecs, the Aztecs, or the Navajo, it goes, the list goes on. They talk about what would happen at the precession of the equinoxes if you made it. And it was scheduled 12 years after the prediction of the demise of humanity through nuclear exchange in the year 2000. He didn't even come close to it. I arrived with my partner channeling me in 1989, and so did others. It coincides with the fall of the Soviet Union. It coincides with the beginning of an energy that no one truly expected, with a harmonic convergence, if you know what I'm talking about. That was the dimensional shift, if you want to say so, where reality changed for you. But in that other dimension, what happened? It's just what you predicted would happen. The escape was in your reality, for here you sit, alive and well, dealing with puzzles that nobody thought you'd even have, because you weren't supposed to be here. Four other civilizations of humanity preceded you and destroyed themselves. The Mayan long count is based on average civilization length, 5,125 years. You start going back, five, six, seven, eight, that's when you start to find very little. You're going to start finding it. And when you do, you'll know I'm correct, and so were those who told you so. That you've been here a lot longer than you think, but you keep destroying yourselves, and you're going to do it again. But you escaped it. The puzzle that I'm here to tell you about is in this new energy. What to expect, how to proceed, the beauty of it, being loved through it, the help that you have, the new tools, that's my job. You're receiving communications directly from the source. They always come with love, harmony, understanding. They come through a human filter. That's the man who sits in the chair. So it's not even that pure, meaning that if you could, you could get it directly, you'd be astonished what's there so the greatest escape is this civilization you don't live long enough to remember what it might have been like to go through a war and to lose all that you have and the horror of it you're not there and you won't be for you escaped it. But dear ones, that's just at the basic reality level. The other layers, it's almost like some of you, maybe not in this room, but maybe those who are listening or those who are outside, there's still the majority of this planet who did not escape the expected potential. So even though it didn't happen, against all logic, consciousness still expects it. And so there was no escape from that which people fear about the future. So the next layer we talk about is fear of the future. How can you have the reality that you see and still expect that which you were told that didn't happen? And the answer, it's a habit. And it's a habit that was developed through civilization after civilization that destroyed itself and didn't make it. And so there are seeds of destruction inside you that still expect it. 
There's a bias that some of you carry where although civilization, life itself, made it, there's part of you who didn't. Still expecting the worst, perhaps. How do you feel about your future, your personal future? This is one of the keys. Is it hopeful and benevolent and exciting? Or is it same old, same old, it's going into the dumper eventually? How many? Be honest, because there are those even sitting here who will expect it to go to a place where it always did for the reasons it always did. And so you are the ones I'm speaking of who are judging the future by the past. There is no awareness or exception or even planning for something you didn't expect, perhaps even better than you expected. Better than you have. You don't live long enough. You would have recognized some of these things before. If you could live just 200 years. And that's only a fraction of that which your DNA was designed for. If just 200, you would start to see the patterns. You'd start to be aware and not repeat that which you expect. But here you are, sitting in a peaceful place. But the escape is not complete. Let's say that you buy into the future is going to be okay. It is. You will have two steps forward, one step backward. There will be challenge. It's going to happen through generations, dear ones. You're going to start to see organizations clean up their act or fall. There will be no more fence sitting on the things that have a lack of integrity. You're going to see old leadership and paradigms eventually their demise replaced by new leadership that's more compassionate, that has more integrity. And that's what's coming. In order to get there, you have to go through gyrations of black and white. We told you this. That's what you're here for is to help those around you who don't see an escape. They didn't get their nuclear war, but everything else is going in the dumper. Let's say that you are all right with the future. Okay, Cryon, we, we made it. I'm okay with the future. I'm one who's going to say this or something better. I'm not going to carry around that, that feeling that we're always going to be at war. I'm okay with it. But what about the other layers? And you'll say, well, what do you mean? Intrinsically, the chemistry in your body, the innate, the consciousness you have carried around for eons and eons has always seen one reality. This or something worse. You've had challenge after challenge after channels Challenge, challenge. There are there are channelers today who won't channel, and they're channelers, and they won't channel because the last time they did in an old energy didn't work out real well. They're closet light workers. Some of you are married to them, and that's why you married them. They just didn't come out of the closet, but they're good people. They're delightful people, and they, they are the ones that you love. They won't buy into this. At some level, that's the, seer, the seed fear of enlightenment. We've told you this before. There's all manner of things that keep you from being who you could be. What does your Akash tell you? Are you, are you one who has escaped from what the Akash tells you. The Akash is the life records in energy in every single one of you. So your consciousness may say, okay, future is good, and your Akashic says, you're crazy. Because all your Akash remembers is horror, disappointment, war, sadness. 
Dear ones, you're going to have to reframe your Akash. And that comes with a consciousness that starts to instruct your own cellular structure that you can change the past because of what the future holds. Did you hear that? Now you know what the phrase means that was taught earlier today. Retro causality. Things that are happening in the future can change the past. Now you know. It means, dear ones, that the consciousness that expects a good future will back up and change that which is your Akashic energy and eliminate or reframe that which the Akash brings to you that says you're nuts. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again because it always does. Are you working on that? What are your dreams like? How many of you are having dreams that reveal insecurity? That's your Akash working overtime to tell you it's not getting better. Perhaps you had a, perhaps you had a talk with your Akash. Did you know you could do that? That which is your higher self, which is in you all the time, all the time, you can bring up and start to change the very chemical level of your DNA, which is where your Akash is stored. And you start to reframe it. You say it's history that will never repeat itself. It belongs in another compartment. Let's put all the old books in another room, and the door is going to be labeled old things that are gone, and the door will be shut. And only the things that are positive that lead you into a future that is filled with light are allowed to come out. And that includes your dreams. Did you know you could do that? You can make that very visualization. And you may have to do it again and again and over and over because the Akash is stubborn. But you will eventually win because it's the higher you talking to the lower you. But what about the other layers? You mean we're not done yet? <laughs> Your innate is responsible for the smart body. It's the one that knows who you are from a health perspective. It's also the one that responds to benevolence and, and creates spontaneous remission. It, it also responds to other kinds of thinking. It can become unbalanced. That's how you think. And what if it expects nothing but what it had? What if you ask your cellular structure, which doesn't know about your Akash, which doesn't know about the biggest escape, which doesn't know about those ancestors giving the prophecies, they only know about the biology. What if you interview that? What's next? What's next? And they'll say, well, obviously, same old, same old. There's diseases to catch. There's a lifespan you're going to have. And look at where you died so many times before. It's built into the chemistry, isn't it? Did you listen to the channel I gave you on the youth template? The design of over 900 years. Where do you take your cue from? I'll tell you, from the past. Isn't it time to change that? Your consciousness is king. And what you say and what you think instructs the chemistry of the body. We've said this so many times. And the proof that we give yet again is homeopathy, which is not supposed to be even scientific. There's too few parts per million in a tincture to make any difference in any chemistry or systems in your body, and yet it works. Because it's the intent of the tincture and the one who takes it under the tongue to instruct the innate on what to do. We already have proof, dear ones, on the planet that the chemistry of your body is instructable. You can give it instructions and it takes them. So what's the problem? How many of you 
have started to give instructions to the chemistry in your body that the future is a good one, that health is there. Reframing the past, eliminating that which is expected into something that is not known. How, Cryon, can we feel good about the unknown? <laughs> oh, why is that such a problem? Why do you have to analyze everything? Why do you have to intellectualize something? The unknown is good. <laughs> you walk into the void and you say, I am so happy that I don't know anything. Because I'm going to be given things I never expected. It's not going to be the past. It's not going to be the stuff I expected. It's going to be new things that I've never seen. Bring them on. And instead, you step into the void and go, I am so frightened. I don't like being here. And that's because the bias of the human being wants to know where you're going. It's a bias. Did you ever see how spirit works with you? When you give intent, when you pray, when you are going into a situation that is unknown? Dear spirit, what's going to happen? Dear spirit, what's going to happen? Dear spirit, what's going to happen? And there's nothing, and there's nothing, and there's nothing. Finally, you give up. And then you get an answer, and it's not what you expected. Did you realize it almost always happens at the last minute? There is a reason. That's because the interface with all humanity has to be taken into consideration. Even spirit doesn't know exactly how it's going to turn out because it doesn't know the free choice of those around you or you. But the benevolence is built in. The field is there, and you're going to find the answer. Timing is not what you expect, but you already knew that. Some of you are still waiting for things, and you knew that. I dare you to step into the void in all these layers and say, I'm in the unknown. Akash, get in the back seat. Get in the other room. Akash, get in that room, slam the door. Old things. Only new things allowed. I don't know what they are. Feels real good. Biology, get in the back seat. Stop giving me the information that they're going to catch this and that and I have to be careful with this and I'm going to die at a certain age because my parents did or catch a certain disease because my parents did. It's all built in, you see. Isn't it time for the grand escape from all of them? Finally, what is the bias you carry about God? I'll tell you what it is. What you're hearing is impossible. A man in a chair speaking through an angelic source to the other side of the veil, ridiculous. Stupid. That's a bias. And there's always those who leave the room saying it was dumb, but it was cute. <laughs> I like the guy even if he's crazy. You see, I know who's here. And I'll say it again. There's no judgment here. You leave with the same number of angels everybody has, with the same amount of love of God that everybody has, and you have a free choice to work with it or not. There's no judgment, and nothing, nothing is going to happen to you or because of these things. But if you see them or try to see them or understand there's a grander picture here, there may be an enhancement of your life that you don't expect, a grandness. What about life extension? What happens when cells start to change because they are harmonious? What happens when there's a confluence of energy that aligns things for the first time? As we said even this morning. These are the things that create health, long life, happiness, and balance. Internalness. It's you with you. We've said it before. It's the discovery that inside you is a force to be reckoned with that comes from the seed of creation. That's what gives you the 23 chromosomes. Dear human, you're different. Very different. If you could align all the layers into the grand escape, how do you see God? 
And I'll give you a hint. If you could escape from what other humans have told you and instead step into the void of love where there are no rules and there's no agenda, that's the biggest escape of all. No judgment. A God that loves you unconditionally no matter what, that expects you home when you leave this planet that knows every breath you take, that loves you through every situation, who takes your hand if you allow it. That's the best escape of all. Maybe it's the first one you should try, for it helps to balance all the others. Layer after layer of bias and filters and history is what you're going to have to get through do you get to that place where you finally can breathe, take a breath, and say it's good to be alive? I'm stepping into a place I've never been before, no matter what people tell me, because I know who's inside, finally. What's it take to get there? I close the way I started. Every single human is different. What you've experienced and what you've been taught, where you've come from and why you're here, weighs on every one of you uniquely and differently. There is no one rule, one pill, one solution, one doctrine that's going to work for all humanity. Instead, there's billions of truths, but they all lead to the one solution of escaping from the bias of who you were. The ones who have the greatest chance are the children. Instructions to old souls coming who have children in their lives or grandchildren in their lives who start to ask the questions. It's your chance to change their filters. What's going to happen to them? How long are they going to live? Who is God? Do you see that door opening? Do you see how what you can say to a young mind who already knows it but wants to hear it from you? The best generation is to come. Never healthier ever. Diseases are going to go away eventually. There's no pattern that you will follow that you have to follow. The love of God is what you have. Spread it around. Can you imagine a young mind getting these instructions and not the instructions you got from your parents or the organizations that you've been through? It's a new future. It's a new paradigm. Old soul, when you terminate, when you're done, when you take your last breath, I'll tell you what's going to happen. You're returning fast. You wouldn't miss the party, would you, really? Because you're now in the new energy, not the old energy, not the old energy, not in the room with the door slammed shut. You'll awaken with a new kind of a cause. You'll remember what you did wrong. You won't make the mistakes you made this time. You'll be a new human. And the planet has never seen anything like it. Never. That's in your future. Your future life. Are you ready to escape or not? Food for thought. But the best news I could ever give you. For the potential of the, grand, of the grand escape is in every single human in the room. Potentials are there. Manifested. I am cryon. In love with humanity. And so it is.